Today on Facing Life Head On. If you're not in a wheelchair your whole life, you can walk after you get paralyzed. So another example of a success with adult stem cells that just isn't there with the embryonic. Jackie Rabin thought her life was over when at 16 a car accident left her paralyzed from the waist down. But a few years later, doctors used adult stem cells from the lining of her nose and placed them on her spine. The results were nothing less than dramatic. Growing up in the small town of Waverly, Illinois, Jackie Rabin spent her days much like any other high school student. She was dating, going to school dances, and playing sports. Her freshman year, she was asked to play on the varsity volleyball team, but shortly after her 16th birthday, that quickly changed. You were 16 when your life changed dramatically. Uh, what happened? Um, well, it was August 12th of 2003, and I had went with some friends. We were going to go um, road tripping, and we all got in a blazer, and we were riding around for a while. and. We got to this country road that we had turned on, and it was very, very rocky, very bumpy. It really shouldn't even be a road, but we got on that, and we lost control of the vehicle, and it had rolled a couple times, and I got ejected about 100, 200 feet on the gravel. Right away, I knew I had lost feeling in my legs because first I just thought maybe they were asleep or I, something was wrong. I, I didn't exactly know what was wrong, but I knew something was up. Jackie was rushed to the hospital and underwent emergency surgery. They uh, told my family and everybody else that they think I may be paralyzed and that I might not be able to walk again. And I knew that they were telling people that, but I didn't really know what was going on. Mm -hmm. I was in shock and they had me on a lot of medications. So when did they tell you that you were paralyzed? The next morning I was awake and they had told me that there's a possibility that um, I may be paralyzed and they had to do my back surgery and they said they'd get a more detailed look at it and be able to tell us more after the surgery and so then I was kind of clinging on to the fact that well maybe after the surgery I'll be fine it's nothing they'll fix me it will be fine and that's what I thought and then after the surgery is when after I woke up after I got it done they told me that I am paralyzed and that they don't think I'm gonna walk again when they first told you did you believe it was true or oh no like I said, I thought that I'd be fine, and this was temporarily, I mean, I can't get hurt, that's what I was thinking. There's a lot of kids my age, or even teenagers, they think they're invincible, and nothing could ever happen to them, and I think that's what I thought, that I'll be fine, this can't be happening to me. I went through a lot of depression, like, a lot, like a week after I was home, it, it sunk in really, really bad, and I was really depressed. I stared at the walls, and didn't want any visitors, and I cried a lot, and that's, I, that's why I think it really sunk in. As months passed, Jackie began to adjust, but it wasn't easy. What was the hardest part to adjusting to that new lifestyle? Going uptown again, but actually in my chair or in a car and seeing like other friends uptown just, you know, standing or running around or talking or something. And the hardest part was seeing that and knowing that I can't. I can't go running or go with them or do what they're doing. How different do you think your life would have been without the accident? I think that, well, since I was very into volleyball, I played volleyball, and I, I was planning on getting a college, college scholarship to play volleyball in college, and I think right now I'd probably be playing volleyball in college and probably had a job right now, and just because that's what the main thing I want to be doing is doing what I did before and playing volleyball. Eight months after the accident, Jackie got a phone call that gave her new hope. Her pastor told her about a television special on a medical procedure being done in Portugal. He said, you need to turn on this channel because I think 
this, you really need to watch this because I think you need to do this. And so we got, we caught like the last bit of it, but we saw mainly what it was about. And we saw it and we're like, yeah, that's, that sounds like something I could do. So mom started a um, letter writing campaign to uh, different colleges, wrote a letter to like the Michigan hospital to let them know about me because we're really such a small town and how are they going to get my name out? How are they going to get people to know about me? especially in Michigan and Portugal. So we had that, and they said the guy, the doctor in Michigan, said he had over, like, 15 letters sent to him about me, and he was so overwhelmed by Jackie Rayvon. So he called me personally and invited us down to Michigan and had us come down, and he told us more about the surgery and checked us out and said that I might, I'm probably a good candidate for this. We went back home, and we had to do tons and tons of medical tests just to, because they're very picky about who they have to get the surgery done. And, I do so many medical tests to make sure that I can get it done and that I qualify, and that's how we got it started. Jackie had a long road ahead of her. Before she could have the surgery, she'd first need to raise $50,000. That took a year of fundraisers, car washes, benefit walks, golf outings, anything to get Jackie to Portugal. Finally, in October 2005, she arrived and was placed under the care of Dr. Carlos Lima the leading pioneer of experimental surgery. He was one of the few neurologists worldwide who perform it. What exactly did the doctors do during the surgical procedure? The first thing they did was they put a tube up my nose to take out the stem cell, and, which is right between my eyes, and they took that out, and then they had to open my back up about six, six inches, and then they took the stem cells that they got from between my nose and injected that into my my, uh, the area that I had hurt. So they put that in there and then they just sewed me back up. That's basically what they were doing. As Jackie recovered, the hope was that the stem cells would do just what Dr. Lima's team of researchers learned was possible. When the cells, transplanted from her nose to her spinal cord, took on the identity of the cells around them, they would promote new pathways and give Jackie feeling in her legs again. About two weeks after I got home, I had to go do rehab in Michigan. What did they have you do? Uh, crawling. The first day I was there, they, um, they checked my legs and seen what I could feel, what I couldn't feel, and just wrote about information about me. And then they decided, well, we'll go ahead and do a rehab session today. So the first day, they're like, well, let's see if we can get you up and see if you can crawl. And they did that. and I surprisingly could and I was doing really well and they had me crawl on the first day. I, I think I surprised the therapist like wow you, you're really good and they're like wow well, we didn't think they didn't have to teach me much because I'm a really fast learner so as soon as they showed me how to do it I did and they're like wow you're, you're really good. <laughs> the second day there was this girl I was working with and she goes well let's just put you in some braces and see what we can do with that and so they got some braces out and stood me on the parallel bars and she showed me how to move my hips and how to walk and it's like okay I'll try and I surprised them then too because I, I walked really good in the braces and, and that was just the second day that I was walking. When we return, we talk with scientist Dr. David Prentice. He explains why adult stem cell research should be getting more attention. The obsession on embryonic stem cells in this country has sort of driven away a lot of the good adult stem cell science. Thank you for inviting us into your home. Each week we feature real people who deal with real life issues head on. Some of their experiences are uplifting, while others will break your heart. But in the end, the message is clear. Those who follow biblical principles on the issues of life are blessed. Become a partner with us in providing a positive, life-affirming message to help change the way the next generation values innocent human life. Please consider a generous gift to help offset the costs of producing this important quality programming. You can donate on our secure website at facinglife.tv or by calling the phone number on your screen during normal business hours. Together, we can make a real difference for life. Earlier, we met Jackie Rabin an Illinois teenager paralyzed after a car accident. Jackie traveled to Portugal for a highly specialized surgery, where doctors took stem cells from her nose and placed them in her spine. Two weeks later, 
Jackie began walking in braces. Dr. David Prentice is a senior fellow for life sciences at the Family Research Council's Center for Human Life and Bioethics. He is an internationally recognized expert on stem cell research. Dr. Prentice says too much attention is given to embryonic stem cell research which has yet to treat or cure anyone. It's adult stem cell research that's proven successful. Let's be clear, when we talk about adult stem cells, you don't have to be 21 to own an adult stem cell. We're born with those cells in our tissues and organs. They're in umbilical cord blood. They're in placenta. Essentially, anything from birth onward counts as an adult stem cell. Now, have there been recent breakthroughs regarding adult stem cell research? Well, I think one of those has been in terms of spinal cord injury for patients like Jackie, where Carlos Lima has now got his peer-reviewed publication accepted and published, uh, the first one actually to show adult stem cells successfully benefiting patients that have had a spinal cord injury. It basically has shown that these adult stem cells are just as flexible and just as useful as embryonic stem cells but without the negatives of tumor formation or getting the wrong cell type. Dr. Prentice says adult stem cell treatments have fewer problems because cells are the patient's own. The embryonic stem cells are going to be coming from the little frozen embryos at the IVF clinic. I'm not related to that embryo, and so you put those cells in me, my body will reject them, just like they would any mismatched transplant. With adult stem cells, we can use the patient's own cells. There's no problem with rejection there. They can be easily accepted and then integrate in and start the repair of the damage. So the thought is that they take adult stem cells mm -hmm. from your own body and put them on the injured spine yeah. and then your cells wouldn't reject yeah. the adult it's my stem own cells. cells. Right. And the hope was to regenerate the cells and get them working in my spine again. When did you notice a difference? Like gradually I noticed how I had more hip movement and how feelings started feeling different, like if somebody touched my leg or something, I could like feel more of that they, where they touched me and stuff. It's probably, I don't know how long after the surgery, about probably like a month, yeah. The fact of the matter is if you look at the science and what they've actually done with embryonic stem cells, again in mice because they're not safe or effective yet to even attempt in humans. When they tried to treat diabetic mice with embryonic stem cells, what they found was that the embryonic stem cells didn't even make enough insulin to keep the mouse alive. In fact, there's evidence now they weren't even making any insulin. The diabetic mice still died. In a couple of other instances where they tried to treat diabetic mice, the cells just formed tumors from the embryonic stem cells, and again, the mice died. Let's contrast that with what's been done with adult stem cells. There are a number of different researchers now that have shown that they can get adult stem cells from various tissues to form true insulin secreting cells. The most important result has been by a researcher at Harvard who showed she could get, quote, permanent reversal of diabetes, end quote, in these diabetic mice using a simple drug and adult stem cells. And in fact, she has FDA approval now to start treating juvenile diabetes patients. So another example of a success with adult stem cells that just isn't there with the embryonic. Adult stem cells have been used to treat more than 70 diseases and injuries. These include heart attacks, stroke, Parkinson's, leukemia, anemia, and, of course, paralysis. But Dr. Prentice says these successes aren't getting the attention they deserve. The focus, the obsession on embryonic stem cells in this country has sort of driven away a lot of the good adult stem cell science and we need to bring that back to the U.S. and focus on it here because that's what's helping patients now. Why specifically is embryonic stem cell research getting all the attention and all the accolades? There are some scientists I know, embryonic stem cell scientists, who really believe they can make this work. Despite years and years of frustration and failure, they want to keep working along on that path. And, and I give them credit that they will, in most of those cases, honestly admit that a human embryo has to be destroyed to get those cells. But they take a utilitarian logic in terms of that. There are those for whom the motivation is economic. They're wed to a certain type of research, uh, the embryonic, because they think they can make money from it, because you can patent 
embryonic stem cell lines where you can't patent your or my bone marrow adult stem cells. There's a competition for funds. The federal government may seem to have a lot of money, but it's still a limited pocketbook. And so competing for those grant funds to just do the research, uh, there's a push for the embryonic, it seems, over the adult. Is that the reason, Dr. Prentice, that we're seeing Americans like Jackie have to go abroad to get treatment that they should be getting in America? It's one of the reasons, certainly. Uh, the obsession with embryonic stem cells uh, has led to a climate where I know some scientists, adult stem cell scientists, who are hesitant to even talk about their research publicly. Uh, it's made it difficult for them to get grant funds or to publish their research so that they can go ahead and get that FDA approval. They're still struggling along, and we're hoping to see that change in the near future. But in the meantime, as you mentioned, patients are having to go overseas to get treatments that they should be getting here in the U.S. Do you think doctors in America will finally catch on and start doing this procedure? I hope so. Sometimes doctors can be a little hard-headed. <laughs> but I hope that they, they catch on and see, wow, this, it can happen. This, it's not just, you're not in a wheelchair your whole life. You can walk after you get paralyzed, and they need to realize it and do something about it. <laughs> By allocating all these billions of dollars to embryonic stem cell research, as some states are doing, like California, what sacrifices are being made in the front of adult stem cell research? Diseases will be taking longer to be treated simply because we're not focusing on the successful adult stem cell research. When we return, Jackie makes great strides in therapy. My goal for the end of the year is to be walking with crutches. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications